Hey there folks, Joey DeAngelis here with the 71st episode of Silent Film Saturday. This is The Man Who Laughs from Paul Lenny, starring Conrad Veidt and Mary Philbin. Story goes a little something like this. You have this disfigured child of a rebellious lord, play, um, father played by Conrad Veidt, and the son in his older years played by Conrad Veidt. Uh, and that son is uh, horribly disfigured. He gives, is given a permanent smile by the Comprachicos. This is then found by a kind um, circus traveler guy, played by Ch Ch eh, Cesare Gravina, and falls in love with a blind girl, Dia, played by Mary Philbin. And then he's caught up in political intrigue and such. So, and the political intrigue is based on the fact that he's the son of a noble lord, and he's supposed to marry this woman, played by Olga Blankanova, Blanklanova, you know, you know who I'm talking about. She was in Freaks, uh, and she's also rather good in this movie. She's just kind of creepy. And she really does fit, like, these, these abstract, these weird, um, sideshow horror films, I guess you could call them. This film, uh is very much like a Lon Chaney movie where you have like the disfigured main character who's in love with a beautiful uh, young woman and Mary Philbin who was in Phantom of the Opera and Conrad Veidt man he really he really has got to be in like my top 10 top 15 favorite actors he is so good in this movie um, there's one of my favorite scenes is the people are laughing at him and he's in this truck, and he's like, he has the permanent grin, which is so freaky, as you can see on this cover. And he just goes like this, and you can kind of see the torment in his eyes, even if he's, like, smiling. You know, speaking of which, this is, uh, if you get a closer look of his face, you might notice a strange resemblance to the Joker, and that's because apparently there was some influence, from what I've heard, from this character to the Joker. And I can definitely see it, because if you look at the older Joker... Um, in the older Batman comics, he does very much look like Conrad Veidt. Also, there's a 20-minute documentary, home video footage, gallery, um, a booklet, and an excerpt from the original novel, and the hand-painted uh, title cards from the Italian version. Now, uh, other things that I just want to talk about this package. I'm sorry I got a little off track. The... Title cards are irritating to look at because they're black and white, and the text is in white, but the background is in black and white. It's like a floral pattern. So sometimes, like, the first letter will be, like, you know, faded away because it's white, and the background's white, and it hurts my head. I got a headache while watching the movie. Not because it's bad, but because it's like that. Also, I wish somebody would produce, like, an original soundtrack, uh, original score for this. Like, a, you know, somebody, like, Alloy Orchestra... Or somebody because I don't particularly like this score. This is actually the original score that was associated with the film because it was the, you know, it was made during the sound era or at least during the sound era, and um, that score includes sound effects, music, and a song at the end, which I hate. The song is so annoying. Ugh. But let's get on to the movie. I like I said, Conrad Veidt is a is, gives a masterful performance in this movie. He also plays the father really well. Um, and I want to compliment the kid who played his character because he, he still looks really freaky with that grin. And I, I think it's more attractive to see the kid with the grin than Conrad Veidt because you imagine that happening to a kid and you go, Mother of God, that's horrible. Also, the makeup, um, Cough Cough Jack Pierce, Wolfman, Frankenstein's Monster, The Mummy, you know, just to name a few. He did that, and it's a really great makeup, and it's still really terrifying. There's one test image that I, I cannot look at without getting goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps right now thinking about it. It's just a creepy image, and I th think most of you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, so yeah, that's um, what I have to say about that. Uh, Fair Mary Philbin's really good in this movie as this blind girl... I, I think uh, it's a better performance than her performance in Phantom of the Opera, but she's probably given better material here, too. So, 
you know, and I'd say this is a better movie, even though Phantom of the Opera is one of my favorite movies. And part of that is also because of the production value and the scale. Now, if I were to compare this to another movie, I'd compare it to the Lon Chaney version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And that movie I'm not a big fan of because it's so slow moving and a lot of the other parts outside of Chaney are boring. Whereas in this film, the, the political stuff outside of Gwynplaine, our main character, played by Conrad Veidt, is actually kind of interesting. And the production value is also really nice, too. Um, the one scene where, like, you see Con the younger kid, you know, a young Gwynplaine run walking through the snow, and you see all these hung men in the gallows and plays this eerie music. It's so, so creepy. You have, like, the uh, this Iron Maiden lock-up torture chamber thing that's really cool. There's a, f a carnival fair where there's a nice camera shot where you're on a Ferris wheel and it's going like this. The camera's like moving around and around, and I think stuff like that is really cool, and that's why I really love this late period of the silent era, like from 24 to roughly like 28, 29, because you get to so much experimentation at this time period. So, yeah, I, I mean, it, this is a fantastic silent movie, and, I, and I'm, it's amazing that this doesn't get as recognized as uh, other notable titles of the same era, but this thing's amazing. Um, I also, I recommend it alongside uh, Lenny's other film, The Cat and the Canary, which is a fantastic, uh, fantastic, like, haunted house movie. So, that's all I really have to say about this fantastic movie. It does have some quibbles on the DVD edition. I hope we get a Blu-ray edition with a new score. With this old score, obviously, as another supplement, but that's just me. Next week, I'm tackling one of the most famous silent films of all time, but also one of the most requested silent film Saturday movies ever. That would be 1922's Nosferatu. See you next week.